In this lecture, we will review classifying mental disorders, the DSM-5, TR. But first, let us review the term classification in itself. According to WSU.edu, classification is not a foreign concept. And as a student, you have likely taken at least one biology class that discussed the taxonomic classification system of kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. You probably even learned the witty mnemonic such as, King Philip, come out for goodness sake, to keep the order straight. The Library of Congress uses classification to organize and arrange their book collections and includes such categories as B for philosophy, psychology, and religion, H for social sciences, N for fine arts, Q for science, R for medicine, and T for technology. Simply, classification is how we organize or categorize things. It is useful for us to do the same with abnormal behavior. And classification provides us with a naming system to structure our understanding of mental disorders in a meaningful way. So, of course, we want to learn as much as we can about a given disorder so we can understand its cause, predict its future occurrence, and develop ways to treat it. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the 5th edition, text revision, also known as the DSM-5-TR, is the most comprehensive, current, and critical resource for clinical practice available to today's mental health clinicians and researchers. The DSM-5-TR includes the fully revised text and references updated diagnostic criteria, and ICD-10-CM codes since the DSM-5 was published in 2013. It features a new disorder, prolonged grief disorder, as well as codes for suicidal behavior available to all clinicians of any discipline without the requirement of any other diagnoses. Now, with contributions from over 200 subject matter experts. This updated volume boasts the most current text updates based on the scientific literature. The latest volume offers a common language for clinicians involved in the diagnosis and study of mental disorders and facilitates an objective assessment of system presentations across a variety of clinical settings, inpatient, outpatient, partial hospitalization, consultation liaison, clinical, private practice, and primary care. Now, before each disorder name, we have the ICD-10-CM codes are provided. Blank lines indicate that the code depends on the applicable subtype, specifier, or class of substance. Following the chapter titles and disorder names, Page numbers for the corresponding text or criteria are included in parentheses. Note, for all mental disorders due to another medical condition, insert the name of the medical condition within the name of the mental disorder due to the medical condition. The code and name of the medical condition should be listed first immediately before the mental disorder due to the medical condition. 
Now let me review the table of contents for the DSM-5TR first. As stated in my welcome video, I will be reviewing all of the mental disorders in the DSM-5 TR in these series of lectures. The table of contents are as follows. The DSM-5 TR classification, which is what I'm reviewing now. Section 1, DSM-5 TR basics. The introduction. The use of the manual. Cautionary statement for forensic use of the DSM-5 TR. In section two, we have the diagnostic criteria and codes. For the first uh, set of mental disorders, we have the neurodevelopmental disorders, then schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders, bipolar and related disorders, depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive and related disorders, trauma and stressor related disorders, dissociative disorders, somatic symptom and related disorders, feeding and eating disorders, elimination disorders, sleep-wake disorders, sexual dysfunctions, gender dysphoria, disruptive impulse control and conduct disorders, substance-related and addictive disorders, neurocognitive disorders, personality disorders, paraphilic disorders, other mental disorders, medication-induced movement disorders, and other adverse effects of medication, other conditions that may be a focus of clinical attention. In section three, it's all about emerging measures and models, assessment measures, culture and psychiatric diagnoses, alternative DSM-5 model for personality disorders, and conditions for further study. There is also an appendix and alphabetical listing of the DSM-5-TR diagnoses and codes. Numerical listing of the DSM-5 TR diagnosis and codes, and the DSM-5 advisors and other contributors, then the indexed. But let's go back to the classification system itself. Now, as stated earlier, following the chapter titles and disorder names, the page numbers for the corresponding text or criteria are included in parentheses. So, here's an example. For neurodevelopmental disorders, you see that it starts off on page 35. Then, intellectual developmental disorders, page 37. Now you will see the blank line right before intellectual developmental disorder, uh, intellectual disability on page 37, you have to specify the current severity. So it states F70 is mild, F71 moderate, F72 severe, F73 profound, F88 global developmental delay, found on page 46, F79, unspecified intellectual developmental disorder, intellectual disability found on page 46. Okay, another example is communication disorders, found on page what? 46. Now, you have F80.2, that is language disorder, page 47. F80. Point zero is speech sound disorder, page 50. F80.81, childhood onset fluency disorder, also known as stuttering, page 51. F80.82, social pragmatic communication disorder, on page 54, and so on and so on. Another example, Autism Spectrum Disorder, page 56. F84.0, you have Autism Spectrum Disorder, page 56, and you have to specify the current severity. 
I will go over all of these more in detail in my upcoming lectures. In my next lecture, we will review the stigma of mental illness as we attempt to fully understand society's role in why people do not seek care. We need to determine the psychological processes underlying this phenomenon in the individual.